Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, my name is Han. I'm from Gina AI. So we are uh, like a you know AI startup based in Berlin. We have about uh, 50 people uh, right now, and uh, we mainly work on uh, embedding tuning, embedding uh, serving, prompt tuning, and prompt tuning, uh, prompt tuning and prompt serving. Right. So I want to also, you know, I previously was also part of like uh, RFAI. I work at, when I work at Tencent, and uh, uh, so uh, I want to also share about some kind of open source uh, efforts that we, uh, you know, we work on the uh, agents stuff, right? So you know, if you look back in 2023, right? Uh, you know, in the first half year of 2023, we start with uh, ChatGPT, all this kind of stuff, and then people found this prompt uh, becomes very interesting. So there are like emerging interest of using prompt to build applications, right? Instead of using Kubernetes, like uh, ML, all the good old ML stuff. We also realize this trend, right? So if you look back, I don't know how many of you realize that. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, remember this uh, chat PDF, right? Which was very popular back in the uh, back in you know January or February uh, this year, right? So the idea is you upload a PDF and then you are able to ask a question about the content inside the PDF, and it will return you some answer, right? And back in March or April, right, or April or May, there was a kind of viral project called Auto GPT, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea is you kind of use divide and conquer this philosophy philosophy to, uh, to kind of break up the very complicated problem and ask something called an agent, right, to solve this problem, right. And uh, um, after that, there is a baby AGI, and now this agent topic, like, kind of back to the AI field, right. I remember, like, I've been working in the AI since, like, 2009, and I remember back in days when we talk about some agent system, it's mostly a very negative terms, right, it's because it's kind of related to a very old style of artificial intelligence, all right, so it's kind of an expert system, agent system, very old style. But now it's coming back, right, so now in order to be a cool startup, like, uh, you have this vibe, cool vibe of about large language model, you have to talk about agents, right. Right. So that's why we, we talk about agents right now. Uh, so the, uh, to give you some ideas, uh, because I don't have like a slide, so I can only like uh, try to uh, formalize my content a little bit. Uh, so to give you kind of the idea about uh, what is an agent, right? So agent basically you can, for those who play games, uh, is a very good metaphor uh, or example is those, the NPC is a non-playable game uh, character in the games, right? So especially in the role play game where you have a lot of like uh, characters moving around, they have their own activities, they have their own thinking, right? Uh, the way of thinking of the way of doing some actions, right? They also have their own properties, right? A, a characteristic such as, uh, you know, health, uh, magic, uh, numbers, uh, those kind of things, velocity, all this. So there are some characteristics to specify how this agent uh, like uh, what is a, uh, kind of how the agents behave and the agent has his own kind of thinking and actions, all these kind of things. And, uh, uh, and when you, you can, of course, the most interesting part of the agents is that you can interact with those agents, right? Uh, it's just like when you play a game, you can interact with, with those characters inside the game, right? And then the character will behave differently according to, you know, which uh, dialogue you select uh, to reply or, you know, you are, like whether you decide to attack this NPC or not, right? So this will give you some response. And uh, the idea, uh, so basically if you summarize everything, uh, uh, so I, I, re I highly recommend you to, uh, to, okay, so we are, oops, where is it? Oh no. <coughs> okay, so let me try this again. Is this the, oh, it's back, okay. Uh, so there is a, uh, can I look at this mirror, oh, there is a mirror option, so that's good, right. Um, yes. So there is a very nice uh, blog post from, uh, from Lillian Wong. Uh, he 
She is a researcher at OpenAI, uh, which uh, she gives a very good overview about how this agent system uh, look like. Right, I highly recommend uh, this blog post. Right, so uh, to help you understand, you know why, you know the, today this large language model can be served as the brain of this agent. Right, because it actually enables the agent to do more sophisticated planning, right, based on the reasoning ability of the large language models, right, and then you can also program it to choose from different actions, right. Uh, so what is interesting here is, uh, so we also have this kind of uh, open source project, uh, which is called SyncGPT, try to build a kind of formal framework for uh, defining the agents, especially defining how the agents sync, retrospect, and react based on you know, based on the memory. And the memory is actually the, the kind of interactive his, interaction history of the environment and other agents, right? Uh, and here is a very kind of interesting kind of uh, two directions here, right? So one is that you can make an agent very powerful, right? So basically by adding a lot of tools there, right? A lot of function in the tools. So for example, you can allow the agents to turn on, turn off the light. You can allow the agent to do Google search, right? So basically call in Google search API or whatever open search API and then return some results so that this agent can have some external memory, external knowledge, right? Uh, so this is one direction. So for example, if you look at back in April or May, this auto GPT stuff, right? This auto GPT project, which is basically going into that direction. So it uses this divide and conquer method, right? And basically uh, follow this philosophy and then apply it to one single very powerful agent, which has a, a access to a lot of tools, right? It can, you know, uh, generate Python code, it can uh, do Google search, it can, uh, you know, run some Python function, it can also like uh, interact with even Raspberry Pi, right? So it's, uh, it has some hardware I.O. stuff, right? So it's going to that direction. Uh, so, but what I want to point out is, uh, so in Lillian's blog post, he, she also mentioned about, you know, how this uh, agent interacts with environment and so on to get reward. So it kind of reminds you the history of the, the research of reinforcement learning, right? Uh, but what I want to point out is uh, kind of the very interesting direction that only emerges, emerged since probably August or July is this how multiple agents working together on same goal, right? So this is a very, very interesting topic. So what we, what I want, what I want to, you know, focus on our inside our company is not about having a very super powerful agent that has access to super versatile tools. I don't want to see that, right? That is a, I don't want to build a superman. I want to build a kind of environment, a sim city, right? If you want to say, right? So a sim city where you have a lot of agents working together to solve one problem, right? And whether it is doable or not, right? So this is basically based on our, like a sync, sync GPT, this project. And then we kind of having this, we pu put that into the prompt perfect, but right now it's only run locally. So, so you are the first person to, to really see this idea, right? So it's not, I'm not really sure it is runnable. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to kind of break the credibility of our, you know, humble startup, right? Uh, but the idea here is the following, right? So, uh, you have this, uh, you can create a lot of agents, right? So each agents have their own description and their own internal goal, right? The so description is visible to other agents, right? But the goal, the intention of this agent uh, is not visible, right? So for example, the description could be, oh, Florian is a very nice guy, principal engineer of uh, Gina AI, and the goal is, uh, okay, so here is a pretty like a benign goal. Uh, the goal is uh, he wants to enjoy his life, right? But the, his goal can be also very evil and hidden from other people, right? So his goal can be, oh, you know, I want to be the CEO, I want to replace the CEO and so on, right? Uh, so basically they're, they're like, you can create this agent which has this public and the private properties and public properties are visible to other agents and visible to the environment and private properties are only visible to yourself. 
right? And then each agent can also take some actions, right? The basic action is basically, if you go back to the uh, Lilia's blog post, so basically the action uh, can be uh, kind of like a, uh, as part of this tools or action, this part, right? So the basic action of large language model is, of course, just to say something, right? So you output some text message, you say, oh, you know, I'm I'm doing fine, you know, I'm not happy, all these kind of things, right? So this is one basic, basic uh, uh, action, right? But of course, you can also allow the agents to have more other actions, right? But uh, I think here, uh, what I want to kind of categorize is, into two two kinds of agent, right? One is some some something that internally we call is conversational agent, and the other is tooling agents. So the difference between conversational agents and tooling agents is that conversational agents can do some virtual stuff, can have some virtual actions, but it only happens in the virtual environment. So it does not reflect it to the real world, right? So uh, to give you an example, right? So tooling agents can turn on and off the light, right? Using Raspberry Pi, all this IO stuff, right? But a conversational agent will just say, oh, I am going to turn on the light, but nothing happens unless the environment is saying that, oh, you turn on the light, right? So it's, uh, it never re, re kind of interact with the real world. It only happens, you know, kind of like a, as a text message. So in that sense, whatever conversational agents is doing, is saying, or is uh, taking some action, is killing someone, is everything is virtual, right? So it's kind of under a simulation, right? So this is a conversational agent, and right now we only focus on conversational agent because, as I said, I'm not really interested in one super powerful agent that have access to a lot of tools, right? And uh, so you can define a lot of agents, and uh, uh, and the most uh, and the very like uh, and there is another component there not another concept here is basically the environment right so environment is basically like a, a city uh, a kind of uh, a place a zoo right where you put all these agents in right and then let all these agents interact with each other and interact with the environment right so environment also like agent has certain properties but in the first version we don't want to kind of expose to uh, you know, too much concepts there, and uh, basically you can see there is an environment called spacecraft, there is an environment called our office, and there is a, like an inhabitable Earth and so on, right? So there's different kind of environment, right? Uh, so right now, as I said, we don't have any other properties of the environment. Uh, here we only have the description of the environment. Oops, what? Yeah, I think <laughs> from time to time I have to unplug and plug in again. Yeah, it should be back. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so this is another concept, right? So, environment's description is visible to all the agents, right? Uh, and now comes the real fun part. It's basically the simulation part. So, in the simulation, you can create a simulation by, you know, of course, you can name the simulation as, uh, as something, right? So, here you can choose to uh, select from one of the predefined or you define a new environment, right? Uh, I'm not really sure this works. Uh, yeah, I think there are some like, uh, oh, here we can do, right? So, okay, so let's, uh, for example, choose to go for spacecraft, uh, but there are some UI problem. It should be also like an environment is unique, right? So uh, it, it can be like this a simulation can only happen in one environment, right? And then for the agents, we can basically choose to add those agents into uh, the environment. So we can add myself, uh, Susanna. Susanna is one of our product managers and uh, Boss Cat. Boss Cat is uh, you know, our, one of our cat from our, one of our developers, right? Uh, and then we can create this simulation, right? Uh, <laughs> and the idea here is uh, because every every agent has its own goal, right? We basically can see how these agents interact with each other, and uh, uh, and to achieve their own goal, right? So let's see if there is some like uh, uh, things going on here. Uh, okay, so where is my simulation created? I remember I call it test, but. Uh, Oh, here. Okay. So, 
Let's see. I think this is really the first time I, I click this button, right? <laughs> so my team just told me, oh, it's ready for you to demonstrate <laughs> today. And then I said, yeah, yeah, sure. Good, good job, right? And then this is the first, first time I click this button. And of course, it doesn't work, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, the, well, the idea here is, uh, so, uh, I mean, to be honest, there's uh, if even, oh, it works. Good job. I mean, looks like I, you know, I have to give some bonus to the team, right? Uh, okay, so, but what does, what does it say? So basically, uh, you can, for those who are very familiar with those log system, it's basically like a log, right? It's a log that emitted from different agents, right? So you can see there's some, <laughs> we basically abuse the log system, right? To have this info level, debug level, and so on, right? And uh, uh, so basically, this is what will happen when you put these three agents together in one room, right? So of course, right now it's not really readable because, uh, uh, like, ideally we should ha have some color highlight on the actions, on you know how each turn, uh, you know what agents say, what agents do, uh, this kind of things, right? But right now, it's, I, I think it's very hard to read. But I, I think you get the idea that uh, so it's basically uh, a record a history of logs of what each agents uh, think and act and choose their next action, right? When the, and then you can also see that they are interact with each other uh, so uh, in real time, right? And in general, this looks like a, uh, if you play this RPG game, uh, you know that it's, there is a turn-based system, right? So basically for each turn, uh, all the characters in this game uh, will move, right? Will take actions based on their, let's say, speed, all these kind of things. So it basically simulates this kind of uh, system, right? And uh, uh, everybody, like, uh, okay, so this cat decide to do the following strategy, uh, you know, uh, continue to emphasize the positive benefits. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I think this cat will do some weird stuff eventually, right? Uh, okay. Anyway, so but you can see the system is already running, right? Okay. Uh, I think right now we don't have any conclusion on this yet, right? But a lot of people ask me, and uh, we also question ourselves: What is the point of doing all these things, right? Uh, and what, like, okay. So if you want to build this as a framework, as a as a feature, uh, as a project, it must have some have some like a value proposition to the, you know, it cannot be just just for fun, right? Uh, I think the value proposition here is basically we hope that by learning, uh, by looking at how these agents behave and interact with each other, uh, we can kind of like learn something and apply it to the real world. It's kind of like a simulation, right? Uh, so you, let's say uh, in one case, uh, you can imagine we have an uh, environment called meeting room, right? And then you put some agents like uh, two PMs, uh, one software engineers, one uh, architecture into the meeting room, right? And then you walk into the meeting room as a boss, right? So you walk into the meeting room saying that, oh, today I want to, you know, use Kubernetes everywhere, right? <laughs> and you just, uh, just uh, figure it out, right? You just say, uh, like leave the room. And uh, by saying, figure it out by yourself, right? And then this uh, this room of agents, they're having discussions, you know, interact, argue with each other, trying to build their argument by doing Google search, by fighting against each other, by agreeing with each other, by building alliance, building, you know, uh, enemies. And then eventually, after 45 minutes of this meeting, right, they should reach to a conclusion, right? And we hope that by looking at the history, right, how they reach the conclusion, it helps us to understand, uh, you know, uh, this, this, how this large language model, the reason, reasonability, reasoning ability of large language model when applying to very complicated scenarios, right? Uh, yeah, so that's, that's basically it, yeah. yeah. Is there a random aspect to it? 
we, we have this issue uh, <laughs> that we call this a butterfly effect, uh, which is like uh, because even we kind of like lower down the temperature to to kind of zero, uh, there's still some like uh, I don't know. Uh, it's probably because of the bug of the system, but there's still like uh, it doesn't repeat every time. Right? I, I I think it's definitely some bug. Right? It should be if you lower down the temperature to zero everywhere, the whole system should be fully deterministic. Right? Yeah, please. Uh, how detailed are the, um, the configurations of the agents and the environments? Is that just what we saw here? Is it very high level? Or? Uh, we, right now, we make it very high level, right? But uh, uh, there is also some other things. For example, the, uh, the environment can also have certain properties. Uh, let's say, oh, the temperature, uh, the, the kind of the space, all this kind of thing. So the, uh, when the agent, when you put an agent into the environment, the agent actually is aware of this environment, right? So for example, if you put the agents into a kind of a, the locker room, which is very dark, and then the agent becomes scared, uh, and also, like for each agent, you can choose to make it human, to make it more human, like by adding some properties such as like a, you know, emotional, confident, depressed, all this kind of uh, you know number valued scaled numbers uh, to the agent, so that agents behave more like a human. Right. The other question is how how do you plan to analyze all those those log? stream <laughs> right now it's just like a, a visual inspection uh, but we will implement some like a filtering uh, uh, you know just like when you look at a cloud all these uh, logs on the clouds right so they can filter by uh, you know uh, which which function you know it emits these logs we will also implement such things so that you can look at which uh, agents emit these logs and also what is also more, uh, very interesting is uh, right now for each agent they have have their internal uh, state, which is called uh, a kind of accomplishment, right? Accomplishment. Accomplishment is a value, is a numbered value from zero to 100, which is basically their expectation of whether they achieve their goal. And then you can see uh, their, this accomplishment, expected, expected accomplishment changes over time. And then you can see how, so for example, if you simulate a very simple salesman, buyer, this kind of simulation, you can see how this, uh, uh, how this two expectation changes over time. It's kind of like a predator, uh, predator, what is this called? Predator, uh, predator uh, prey. Yeah, predator prey. Yeah, kind of a simulation. Yeah. Uh, thank you for a great uh, presentation. I might have missed it, but I wonder, right? How do you discover what these agents can do? For instance, let's say Florian has an evil goal. He wants to replace the CEO, yeah. but we know that Han is the CEO. So Han has implicit capability. Yeah. He can terminate Florian, right? So basically, yeah. like looking at this, how do I know that you have capabilities like manage Florian? Like yeah. how do I discover this kind of capabilities? The, the discoverability, so we try to not implement a kind of a meta rule system. Well, so basically uh, we don't have a meta rule saying that, oh, Florian is the kind of work for Han, so he cannot oversue Han, right? We don't have such system. Uh, we try to avoid that. We try to let the uh, uh, the agents figure out this thing by themselves. Right. So he can figure some things out by being fired. Yes. Right? yes. But then he he has no other chance to, to to do stuff, right? Yes. So like it's a little bit like you need you need to give him a warning, like so like let's, if stuff happens. Yeah. So so you basically oh, okay I got so like you observe the actions. Yeah. And so the agents see actions. Yeah. And they learn from the actions yeah, exactly, they, exactly. what they can do yeah. or cannot do. Yeah, they will. They are sometimes they will just uh, like uh, we can also implement in a kind of more uh, kind of uh, what is this uh, a look look ahead way. So basically, Florian, while Florian talking to Han, uh, the agents can build an internal kind of model uh, about Han, right, and then use this internal model to predict Han's behavior. Right. Got, got it. Yeah. So, so in this case, this is not a complete closed system because you like the system will read emails between you, right? Like, like if you really want to know yeah. what's going on between Florian and Han, it, you need to hook it up to your company email, for instance, or Slack, right? Yeah, that's that's true. So basically, right now the uh, the the system or the agent have no 
uh, external knowledge about anything, right? So they, their own knowledge or their own behavior are defined by this very simple structure. So the, the description and uh, the goal and uh, uh, the actions here, right? And there are also a couple of internal state that I said, but probably on the UI side, we didn't, we didn't show that, right? Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.